second time I'm recording this video because the files didn't transfer. Hey folks, Adam McIntosh here and today I'm coming to you with a video on why I think your art is being displayed poorly. It's something that I've been thinking a lot about recently and I feel like I've made a lot of breakthroughs in my own thought process on it and I just want to share that information with you and hopefully I can help you out. Uh, I truly think that if you're in a position where you haven't yet given a consideration on how your art is displayed, or maybe you have, but you just don't, don't have the means to implement that yet, uh, that you and your potential success and that your artwork is going to suffer. So just quickly, if you're new here, and this is one of the first videos of mine that you've seen, my name is Adam McIntosh, as I just said, I make a lot of creative related content. So if you enjoy this kind of thing, hit that subscribe button, uh, leave a like, maybe even share this with somebody that you think it's also going to help. And yeah, I'm gonna make a lot of references to photography, uh, music, and sort of drawing and painting, but those are just the things that I do and the things I know sort of best about. But I'm pretty sure you can almost take anything on this channel and directly relate it to your own art forms if you don't already fall into one of those categories. And hopefully there's something useful in there for you. Now also for those who don't know, I shoot a lot of street photography. It's something I've focused on a lot in the past couple of years. But I've also been thinking recently how Instagram just isn't a great place for my style of street photography. But oddly enough, it's the only platform I really use. So that just got me thinking about, you know, how many other people are affected by this and really what is the effect on this on your artwork and, and how we present our artwork. So take this for example, there's an amazing classic black and white portrait, right? It's blowing up huge, it's beautiful, it's technically well done. You have an interesting model, maybe it's somebody famous, and you put that image in a gallery or an exhibition or a museum, and hopefully, and I think rightly so, that image would gain the attraction that it deserves. Now put that image on Instagram, and for whatever reason, uh, that's probably going to lose out in the whole likes algorithm to, let's say, a girl in a white t-shirt with no bra underneath. Now why is that? Does that mean that the classic portrait shot is a worse image than the model shot? Now obviously not, but I think this is just a simple case of the wrong platform for that artwork. Now let me give you another example. You're sitting in a cafe, it's Sunday morning, slow morning, everything's pretty chill, you guys have a nice cappuccino, you set yourself down in a comfy lounger, and then the cafe starts playing really heavy metal music. Doesn't make a lot of sense, right? I like heavy metal music. This might be the best heavy metal band I've ever heard in my life, but I don't want to hear it there. And to be honest, it might even become irritating. Or how about a masterful oil painting? A beautiful classic landscape painted, beautifully framed, and then hung up in a public bathroom. Doesn't make a lot of sense, right? And probably won't get the appreciation that it deserves. However, you hang that in an art gallery, hopefully it will. Graffiti, on the other hand, found in a public bathroom, seems to totally make sense. Find graffiti in an art gallery, we call that a sellout motherfucker. I'm kidding, obviously, I'm just winding up the old heads. Now hopefully you're already starting to see what I'm getting at, but what I wanna do now is present a little bit of that visually to you. So take a look at this image that I shot in 2019. Just take a second and soak it in. Okay, now you've already probably started to form an opinion on whether or not you like this image or whether you think this is a good or a bad image, but that's beside the point. The thing I wanna point out is that when you share a photo on Instagram, for example, this is how people will see your work. They see this one image, and in fact, you're already seeing it bigger than what most people are ever gonna see. Most people are gonna see that on their phone. And now I want you to take a look at this series. So now that you've experienced that series of photos, and hopefully you can start to get a bit of the experience and the running theme, I think whether you like that first image or not, you can start to understand that there is an increased value in that first image. The problem with something like Instagram, for example, is that not many people are gonna see your work that way, they're just gonna see the one image. I wanted to share just one more set of photos with you. This is just based on color alone, something very simple, and hopefully you can start to see the impact of what happens when we start to pair these photos together. So with all that being said, 
How are we supposed to combat this? How are we supposed to display our art correctly? So it's probably going to be a different thing for many of us on how we display our artwork, but I think it's universal that really what it needs to start as is a bit of a brainstorming process. It might take a lot of thought for you to actually start to narrow down the best way to display your artwork. I understand a little bit this is kind of conceptual, uh, but I urge you to take that time. I really do think how your artwork is displayed could be up to 50% of its impact, and uh, a lot of us are just giving it little to no consideration. So one idea that I came across recently, and this might just serve as a little bit of an inspiration, hopefully to sort of kickstart your own thought process on this whole idea, um, was something I admired a lot actually um, from another street photographer, a guy called Eric Kim, uh, love him or hate him. He has a very modern style of shooting, I would say. He's very loose and fast paced. Um, seemingly he takes a lot of images and a little less time to consider, I guess, composition and lighting, something that more a more like classic street photographer might take a lot of time in setting up. And um, yeah, what I saw him doing was presenting his images in like a slideshow format on YouTube. So making a video slideshow format from what I remember, they were quite fast cut and um, there wasn't always a coherency between the images and they were just laid out in this you know, five minute long slideshow or something like that. And behind that was uh, a sort of driving atmospheric uh, industrial music and the whole thing just came together really well. Like love it or hate it, it worked perfectly. It served as this kind of um, almost a way to display how the artist was shooting and I, and I hope that that, that was his intention um, because if he's able to put that out there and put out this sort of modern way of displaying the way that he shoots and present that to people and to be understood, I think then that's a great success. So the next example I can give you is just something from my own experience. So like I said, that triggered a lot of thought on how best to display my own artwork. And the conclusion that I came to was something that I can share with you. So again, just to give you another example, I shoot mostly a more classic style of street photography, I guess, or at least that's where my inspiration comes from. Uh, people like Joel Meyerowitz, uh, John Free, Shirley Baker, people sort of just like shot film or, um, you know, because they shot in a time that was before digital or at least maybe they even continue to shoot film. And I know what you're thinking. What about Bresson? You mentioned classic street photography, but you do not mention Bresson. But what I'm getting at is I don't always shoot for like the best one-off image. I kind of prefer more series styles of photos. I love looking at my work from over a couple of years and starting to pick out these patterns and piecing those patterns together and then displaying them as a whole, like the example that I showed you earlier. Whereas the Instagram algorithm or at least the Instagram users are just always on the lookout for this one amazing single image. You know, the perfect ray of sunshine that lights up a well-dressed man in the wide brim hat or the lady, a silhouette of a woman at night. It's rainy streets and she's holding an umbrella, you know? Not to mention the like near vomit inducing levels of split toning just smashed into an image. What I'm getting at is just, that's not really my style. I will shoot those things should I see them. I live in a quiet city, I take what I can get, but it's not my personal style. So what am I to do? I'm looking for a way to present multiple images so I can present running themes in my artwork. I'm also looking for a way to give a sense of timelessness, something classic, maybe something in print, maybe something that evokes pre-internet era, something malleable. So maybe a zine, maybe a book. Perfect. So these are just some ideas, something like I said that I've been thinking a lot about recently and I really hope this serves as some inspiration to you to give it some thought yourself. And on top of all this, I do just want to add one final thing. Where you choose to display your artwork, the space or the platform says a lot about you and your art. It's not just a one way street. Take my easy example from earlier, the classic oil painting presented in a public bathroom. That no longer really becomes about the art. You might think it does. You might think I have this beautiful painting. Here's a free place where I can display this art. But now the viewer has a whole bunch of other questions, questions that you might not want them to be asking. That viewer, or at least I would as the viewer, would start to ask questions like, what is the artist trying to say by putting their artwork here? Are they questioning the value of classic art? Are they just being a troll? I don't know. That could get very conceptual and maybe that's a whole other video in itself, but I just want you to be aware of that. The space or the platform is a large form of communication also, and you just don't want it kind of overpowering the message that you want to present in your artwork. 
But yeah, that's just about it from me today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope this served as some help and some inspiration to you. That is what I wanna bring. I love doing these videos. I love talking about creativity. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them in the comments box below. I didn't write anything for this video. I just freestyled it. So I hope it's not entirely spaghetti and I actually managed to make some sense. But if you do have any questions or things to add, please leave them down there and I will get to those. Leave a like on this video, subscribe if you wanna see more of this content and give it a share with someone who you think this might help too. I am at macintosh.adam on Instagram, all the links and everything down below. Please do go check that out. And yeah, I think that's about it from me. You guys take it easy, happy creating, and I will see you next time. Peace.